Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today I have a very special guest, my dearest colleague, Priscilla Brem, who's one of the founding partners here at Morton Wells. Priscilla, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. So looking forward to this conversation. So let's start off with telling us a little bit about your family's journey. I know your family's from Ireland originally, and then you grew up on a farm. Can you share a little bit about what life was like on a farm and how that has impacted you to become the su successful women that you are today? Um, well, let's start with the Ireland part of that question. My mother's side of the family mm -hmm. actually originated in Ireland. Both of her parents, grand, both of her parents' grandparents mm -hmm. originated in Ireland, immigrated into Canada, and then down into Iowa. And my mother grew up in a tiny little town in Northwest Iowa called Ayrshire, Iowa, where she was born, baptized, had her first communion, got married. I got married in the same church. Wow. So lots of memories in that area. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it was a great area to grow up. I grew up on a farm mm -hmm. and there are so many lessons that I brought to my adult life from mm -hmm. the farm. And um, for example, one of the things that you learn very quickly on the farm is that lots of things, everything really yeah. goes in cycles, mm -hmm. right? There's a natural cycle. You plant in the spring, you watch the crops grow in the summer, you harvest them in the fall, and then the winter, you don't do anything in terms of planting crops because if you put seeds in the ground they're just going to die and right. you know it's interesting how i kind of connect that with the stock market because <laughs> the stock market mm -hmm. as we all know goes in cycles and there's a time when when stocks are growing mm -hmm. and there's a time when it seems like they're dying right right <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> that winter can be really mm -hmm. really long right but if you wait long enough there's always a spring I and so that. there's always a renewal and a growing mm -hmm. season. And so um, that lesson is actually something I learned on the farm. Wow, that's amazing. I love that. I love how you're still able to apply those very important lessons that you learned in childhood. Right. It's right. beautiful. So what role do you think your mother played on the farm that kind of influenced you as a woman, as a successful woman, as a successful wealth advisor? And what is also your favorite memory of your mother? Oh, that memory, that, that's going to be a hard <laughs> one to find a favorite. But um, let's talk about the role that my mother played on the farm. When mm -hmm. we moved onto the farm, I was in second grade. Okay. And I was the oldest. I had a, a younger sister who's three years younger. And my mother was pregnant with my brother. Mm -hmm. So she, for that first year, mm -hmm. was pretty busy, you know, being pregnant and then giving birth and, and yeah. having an infant son. Right. Mm -hmm. So her role during that period of time was to take care of the house, take care of my dad, who mm -hmm. was clearly the head of the household. Oh, okay. And, um, and she also had chickens that she took care of and sold the eggs. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of her cash money was the eggs from the chickens. Nice. But as my brother needed less and less care, mm -hmm. you know, growing up, mm -hmm. she took on a full load on the farm. So she would get on the tractor, she would be out in the fields with my dad. Um, and so there was almost nothing that my dad did that my mother couldn't do. Mm. And so that was a really great lesson growing up. Yeah, I because, imagine Because so. mm -hmm. uh, as the oldest in the family, I also had chores. Right. Right. I had chores every day that I had to do after school. Mm -hmm. In the summer, you know, we were out in the fields. Right. pulling weeds and doing everything that needed to yeah. be done. Yeah. So I grew up without the expectations that this job belongs to a guy and this job belongs to a girl mm -hmm. because you know, on a family run farm, especially yeah. Yeah. whatever the job is, if you can do it, you get it done. Right. Yeah. So there is no, there's a, there's sharing of responsibilities and role. There's no roles of like, you're a woman, you wash dishes, or you're a man, you mow the lawn. Like everybody yeah. collaborates, kind of. I love that. Well, the kids did the dishes. You know, my <laughs> sister and I did the dishes. And, you know, my dad definitely sat in the mm -hmm. chair after dinner. So okay. there was there was that. There were some roles. Yeah, there were some. <laughs> yeah. But to your question about mm -hmm. my favorite memory of my mother, mm -hmm. every once in a while she would just kind of 
say, um, especially when I was in high school, mm -hmm. I was very busy with after school activities, sports, music, the yearbook, you know, you name it. Right. And um, my mother once in a while would say to me, you know what, Priscilla, you just go do what you need to do. I'll take care of your chores. Oh, and that <laughs> that's is so sweet. That's such a special memory. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, Aww. she had her own full load of work. Mm -hmm. And so to go that extra mile. Right. Uh, really meant a lot to me. Mm. And that's something that I've tried to bring into my relationship with other people as well. You know, I try to think, okay, what can I do to kind of make their life a little better in that moment? And we see that all of us that work with you see that love and attention that you always want to make, whatever it is, better. So thank you for being that way. First kind of memory of money. I know we've talked a little bit about this in some of the herself sessions, but how did that shape your beliefs and choices that you've made for your own family now? Um, okay, so my first memory of money was um, the summer between my second and third grade. So we had just moved on to the farm. Mm -hmm. And we lived near a, a tiny little community called Webb, mm -hmm. Iowa. And um, Webb was actually big enough to have a stop sign mm -hmm. and you know, maybe half a dozen little businesses. So okay. there wasn't a lot that would draw you into town. Right, very right? small, yeah. So what the, what the um, merchants in mm -hmm. Webb did is on Saturday nights for about a month mm -hmm. in the summer, they would have uh, a movie in the back lot behind Pee Wee's grocery store. Mm -hmm. And um, they would put out wood benches and um, project a movie. And that was free. So all the farmers came in and, mm -hmm. you know, we had a good time. So my, my father mm -hmm. um, sort of surprised me during one of these Saturday night movies mm -hmm. in, in the um, in web and he gave me a nickel. Oh. For no reason. We didn't have allowance, you know. Right. Was, I don't think there was enough money for us kids mm -hmm. to have an allowance. But he mm -hmm. gave me a nickel just out of the clear blue sky. Mm. And I looked at this nickel and I said, wow, this is great. <laughs> so I went into Pee Wee's grocery store mm -hmm. and then I stood at the candy right. you know, <laughs> area and mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out what do I get with this? Do I get mm -hmm. a whole bunch of penny candies and then I get like a whole bag? Right. Or do I get a candy bar that I can have all to myself? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, oh gosh, you know, if I get penny candies, I might have to share them. <laughs> if I get a candy bar, I get to keep that all to myself. Right. And then I realized later mm -hmm. that I didn't even think about keeping it and putting it into the church collection mm -hmm. or saving it and then having more money. Right. I was just, it was a gift out of the blue and I was ready to spend it. Right. Yes. <laughs> you you wanted that candy or that chocolate, but you, you were strategically kind of planning for what you were going to do, but I was. I was. <laughs> not so much investing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what I realized later mm -hmm. is that, you know, sometimes you give a gift mm -hmm. and, um, but maybe the recipient feels like there are strings attached mm -hmm. to it. Right. Or there are expectations that you're going to behave in a certain mm -hmm. way. And um, so one of the things that I have tried to share with my clients mm -hmm. and that I have adopted as my own gifting philosophy mm -hmm. is to give the gift freely and, and without attachments or strings or expectations. Mm -hmm. And then it's a gift freely given and joyfully accepted. Nice. I love that. So a gift without any conditions, yeah. right? Yeah. I love that. That's a great lesson. Now, we know, as we touched on earlier, that in this business, in financial services or finance, there's not a lot of women advisors. Hopefully that will change going forward because we already see some of those trends changing. But... What challenges have you faced as a woman? Because you started kind of as, you know, pioneer in this industry, specifically with Morton. And how have you overcome them? Um, well, I think drawing on my experience on the farm has helped to okay. some extent because my first experience in an office um, mm -hmm. was in the Los Angeles area in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. And that was definitely male dominated. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, one of the positions that I had where I learned the most actually was the environment in the office was um, fairly abusive, mm -hmm. frankly. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I learned is I had to let go of whatever happened in the office and, and you know, give myself time to kind of decompress when I got home. Yes. 
But when I was in the office, I mm -hmm. was always the first one there. Mm -hmm. And I worked harder and smarter than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And over time, conditions changed and I began to be recognized for the talent that I brought to the table. So yes. it's really just hard work. Mm -hmm taking classes, getting education mm -hmm. in your field of choice. Because I was a music major in college right. and had traveled for five years with an international musical mm -hmm. group. So that was not exactly, you know, a resume that worked well in an office. You didn't have your MBA. You didn't go to <laughs> business school. You no. didn't have your certificates, right? No, <laughs> yeah. no. So I just, yeah. it was your just licenses. hard work and demonstration mm -hmm. of talents and, mm -hmm. and seeing jobs that needed to be done and, and doing them. That's fascinating because that's completely not correlated to the business industry. And yet you have your certifications, you, you, you've got your licenses and yeah. you, add, you added so much value where you thought. And I love that, that you were the first one there. You worked harder than anyone and then yeah. you proved your values. So, And I think yeah. it's important to, to um, take what happens in an office environment mm -hmm. and, and let go of it so mm -hmm. that you can have personal time where you're not thinking about things that went on in the office. So kind of compartmentalizing, like. Yeah, to, to the extent mm -hmm. that you can. I think that's a healthy way to approach okay. having a career and, and home life. Nice, okay. And now you have, we all see it here. You have a very special bond with your clients. Some you've had for 20 years. Can you share with us what parts of doing this work brings you joy? Um, well, it helps to have the world's best clients. <laughs> I really think that's helpful. I would think <laughs> I, I feel so blessed that I mm -hmm. have such fantastic clients, mm -hmm. but um, many of my relationships with my clients go back 30 plus, mm -hmm. wow. you know, some 40 years. Right. And, and over that time, you know, you develop a pretty strong bond. Right. But what really gives me joy is knowing that uh, even with clients, I've only worked with a short time that, I'm always doing things or thinking about mm -hmm. what I can do to make their life better. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it doesn't get better than that, right? right? You know, if I can make other people's lives better, then maybe something that I've taught them or something that I've shared with them, they pass on to their children or to their right. friends. And, um, you know, you just never know where the fruits of your labor will land. That's so beautiful because one of the things that inspires me as an upcoming advisor and looking to you as a pioneer is the relationships you have, the beautiful relationships and the stories that I get to hear from them and how much they look to you and how much I appreciate just what you pour into them. So that's beautiful to us as well. We get to benefit that you know from that as your colleagues. So it is beautiful, the work that you do. What are some things that you think women can do to decrease their fear of kind of this financial insecurity specifically in like, will I have enough when I retire? Um, well, I think knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And information is one thing, you know, numbers, data, mm -hmm. but how you translate those into knowledge mm. that impacts your life, that's different. And so I think it takes a number of things. One is, um, I think it's a good to build a community or build a village of people that you trust okay. who actually have expertise mm -hmm. in areas where you need information. Mm -hmm. um, another is, you know, listen to good bot podcasts, mm -hmm. uh, read, study, you know, take a class or two. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're working with a Morton advisor, ask them, to educate you. If you don't understand something, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I think that's mm -hmm. really key. Mm -hmm. And um, it's terribly, terribly important to have a plan mm -hmm. and um, get a partner who will help you stay accountable to your plan. Right. Because again, with knowledge comes power and security and confidence. Mm -hmm. And so having a plan, having a, um, a village of people that you trust and getting education, all of those things really come together and, and help anyone feel financially secure. I love that. And that's kind of what we're trying to do here with the Herself offering, right? Is yeah. Encouraging women and partnering with them to get this education, to ask the questions and have right. those conversations. So. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. 
Okay, so what advice, we kind of touched on this already, but when it, when you're a new mother, especially if you're a little bit younger and you're balancing your career, you're balancing your family, and they're kind of in, in wealth, the wealth building stage, it's hard <laughs> to kind of like keep everything balanced, right? And so yeah. what advice would you have for women that are currently in that stage of life to like be successful? Well, um, number one is I think, don't be too hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't do everything all at once. Okay. So, you know, give yourself permission to have the occasional meltdown <laughs> <laughs> and um, take care of yourself because mm -hmm. if you don't take care of yourself, how can you take care of your, your child and, mm -hmm. and, you know, other family and career and all of the other things that we have. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, give yourself permission to not be perfect at everything. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I think it, it takes a village. If you have a, a life partner and they're good at helping with the child, great. Mm -hmm. If they're not so good at helping with the child, then make sure that there's a balance of chores in the home mm -hmm. that, um, you know, while you're taking care of the humans, you know, maybe your partner can take care of the the physical things in the house and the yard and, mm -hmm. you know, pay the bills for a while and all of that. Um, and then I think give yourself time or permission, mm -hmm. if you will, to be fully in the moment. Mm -hmm. So if you're in your work, stay in the moment at your work mm -hmm. and enjoy that work mm -hmm. while you're there. And then when you leave and you're with your child and your family, enjoy those moments. So mm -hmm. stay in the moment. So being fully present with whatever yeah. it is that you're doing. Yeah. I yeah. love that. That's yeah. beautiful. If Now, if you didn't work in this business, in this industry, in wealth management, what else do you think you would do? Oh, I, I, I do music. Music? Yeah. It's yeah, your love? I would, yeah, I would definitely. <laughs> and, well, you know, I've, I have mm -hmm. a training in music and, yeah. and I did travel for a while. Um, but I would definitely create music. But what I would create mm -hmm. is music that kind of inspires and challenges people, mm. not kind of whining about, you know, a lost love or mm. you know, <laughs> a my, heartbreak. My dog died. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those Which are all tragedies. Yes. So we're wrong. not discounting. <laughs> but, um, you know, creating yeah. music that has that has content mm -hmm. and that has a story that it tells and yeah. maybe inspires people to be a little bit different. Hmm uplifting and encouraging yeah. them maybe yeah or comforting yeah yeah i love that we all need that okay so we're gonna go over some rapid fire this is a rapid fire round uh -oh. so it's gonna be quick is your bed made right now yes. or oh right answer <laughs> what is... always except on sunday <laughs> <laughs> because we want to go back to <laughs> would your 12 year old self think you were cool no no, not no. a chance. <laughs> okay. Now, if you had a super strength, would it be flying or what other super strength would it be? Ooh, for sure flying. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. The freedom. Uh, is that what you the think? freedom. You know, you kind of, if you've ever glided, it's just, you know, the wind in your ears mm -hmm. and, and, and it's absolutely magical. So definitely flying. Where I live, um, I get to watch red-tailed hawks oh. riding the air currents, yeah. and I'm always just insanely jealous. <laughs> That's beautiful. Okay, so if you could be reincarnated as any animal, what would that be? Oh, for sure the river otter. What is a river otter? A river, <laughs> a river otter is um, one of the only animals that plays, mm. just actually plays for play purposes. Oh. And um, they love the water and they're kind of sleek on the land mm -hmm. and look a little funny, but they're <laughs> unbelievably elegant in the water. Oh, nice. And I like that they just play. They just play. They're yeah. playful and fun yeah. to look at. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Priscilla. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you.